Hey, this is Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter. And today we're going to tie a fly that I used to use a whole lot more, and I'm wondering why I don't use it as much anymore. And I'm going to start using it again. Um, it's going to be the WD-40. Uh, super simple pattern that works awesome for uh, a midge larva or a betis nymph pattern, um, two of which um, we have in abundance in our stream. So this is a fly that you definitely should have. Uh, I've got a size 16, 2457 or kind of heavier wire scud hook in the vise. I just watched a video recently with the um, originator of this fly and he um, actually tied it on a short straight shank hook like a 3769. Either one will work. Tie this in sizes 16 down to 24. I'm going to use olive thread. You could do kind of an olive brown or brown version. Or I've, we've even done in the past like a brown, kind of rusty brown version that's worked really well for us. But an olive is kind of classic. Now in that same video, the originator said he liked to use the wing feathers, um, or you know, feathers near the wing, uh, rather than just the body or flank feather, which is what you often see on this fly, but it's been really hard to get some mallard feathers. If you're lucky enough to have some some flies uh, or feathers around like bronze mallard that you've used for salmon or steelhead flies, you, you won't often use all the feather um, because some of them will be too short for the wing. So you could save some of that material for, for tying um, a WD-40. And the, um, the point of using this feather was they're just a little um, a little stiffer, a little more durable than, than the flank feather. But since the flank feathers are um, easier to come by, I will tie it with the, the flank feather for the video. And all I'm going to do is just take a clump there, peel it off so I get a nice little bundle of fibers. Hopefully you kept the tips relatively evened out. And then let's we'll work our way back just past the the hook point closer to where the barb is and we'll tie in our little bundle of fibers there and I'm just keep some tension on there and I'm going to shorten those up just a little bit this is a great fly too if you're just learning to tie flies because it's so simple but you can tie a bunch of them and they they still are just a good producing fly so an easy fly that catches a lot of fish is a great uh, a great pattern to use if you're starting out in tying flies now we're going to take our thread and just using nice tight wraps cover up the mallard as we go forward and then as we get kind of three quarters of the way to the front of the hook we'll take our mallard we'll fold it back and kind of tie it back so it can become our wing case and I'm going to use all of hairs mask dubbing here for our thorax. I'm just going to dub a small ball on there or a small noodle because they're going to make a ball for our thorax here. There we go. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Let's kind of compress down once you pull the wing case over him. So I add just a little bit more dubbing. There you go. Okay, now I got my my <clears throat> thorax done. We can finish the, the fly by pulling our fibers over. Put them straight over the top. Tie them down. We'll take our scissors Get in there and take out the extra and wrap that a few more wraps and then we'll finish with a whip finish. Now you could definitely put a tungsten bead on this fly, um, a small nickel, a black nickel tungsten bead would be really nice on this fly to give it just a little bit of weight. But it's also nice to have some flies in your box that aren't all weighted with tungsten beads. So tie some of both and you'll have an option for different fishing conditions. I'll trim that off. And there we go. 
super simple fly but don't don't let that fool you very very effective great fly to have in your box i'm hans from dakota angler and outfitter thanks for watching